everyone, it's Brittany again from Tennessee National Wildlife Refuge bringing, your, bringing you your daily activity of the day that you can do at home with your kiddos. So today's fun game is called Animal Olympics. And the way this game works is, well, each animal has their own special unique skills. And the kids are gonna try to mimic, copy, reenact those behaviors and skills that these animals have. So let's just jump right on in. Our very first Animal Olympic is the monarch butterfly. So a monarch butterfly pumps its wings to warm up on a cool morning so it can fly. Fold your arms and pump like a monarch 15 times. So you're gonna get your kiddos. You're gonna have them tuck their wings in just like this and they just woke up. And they're trying to get warmed up by the sun before they can take off and fly. So they start pumping one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Then what I like to have the kids do is pump their wings a little faster 15 times. And then I have them do it even faster. And then I have them do it supersonic speed and the kids absolutely love it and have so much fun with it. Now, the next Animal Olympic we are going to be doing is a frog. So frogs often migrate from one site to another to stay near water and to find their mate. You can often hear them calling to attract mates and defend their territory. Hop like a frog for 10 feet. So what we're gonna be doing, you're gonna have your kid squat down just like this. Cause this is the frog stance and it's the only way to do it. And what you're gonna have them do, you're gonna have them take the biggest leap they can. Maybe have them do it 10 times. If you're doing it inside, maybe the weather's not good, you decide to do this another day. You can do it inside too, that works just fine. And you're gonna have them take one giant leap and have them do that 10 times. Or maybe all over the backyard, who knows? Where am I, right? Alrighty, our next Animal Olympic, it's a nice and easy one. So we have our bald eagle. So bald eagles have approximately 400 pounds per square inch of pressure in their mighty talons. This strength helps them grab and hold onto slippery fish. Open and close your talons 15 times. All right, so your kids are gonna take their hands just like this and this is gonna be their talons. And they're just gonna squeeze as tight as they can and then open them back up. And then squeeze again and they're just gonna continue to do this for 15 times. Super easy, a nice relaxing one, not bad at all. But now we're gonna jump right on in to our next one. And this is a lizard. So, some lizards make themselves appear larger than they really are by doing push-ups when they are threatened. Be like a lizard and do 10 push-ups. So, we have the kids get down just like this. And they start on the ground. Because that's how a lizard would be. They're low to the ground. And then they jump up and act all big and scary to threaten the predator. And when the predator's gone, they go back down. And so then you do it again, another predator came by. And then back down. Open oh, and there's another predator. And you do this 10 times, right? All right. That's always a fun one for them. They like to show off. All righty. Our next Animal Olympic is the Bobcat. So Bobcats walk on their toes and this is called digitigrade. And it gives Bobcats the speed and power they need to be good hunters. Now some of your kids, maybe they've played sports or maybe they've watched sports type movies. And a lot of times you hear coaches say, stay on your toes. Well, that's what Bobcats do. They walk around on the tips of their toes because one, it keeps them quiet and stealthy as they're walking around. But two, it also helps them take off faster. Because if you're flat-footed, it's harder to take off. Whereas if you're on your toes, you can take off so much faster. 
So you're gonna have your kids get up. They're gonna walk around on their toes. They're stalking their prey. And then they pounce. And they get their prey. Alrighty. Our next one is a skunk. So skunks are known for their smelly spray that protects them from predators. When they do spray, they stick their tail straight up and kick their back legs up in the air. This helps direct the oily odor and keeps it off the skunk. Put your hands on the ground and do five skunk handstands. Okay, I gotta tell you about the skunk really quick. So, the skunk doesn't actually smell. Like it said, it's that oily spray that it sprays at its predators. Now, a skunk is gonna try to aim at a certain part of the body of a predator, their face. Because guess what senses are all over their face? Their mouth, their nose, their eyes. And if that spray gets in their face like that, they're gonna be coughing and sneezing and crying and eyes are burning. And these predators are gonna be so focused on what's happening on their face that this skunk can then just scurry on its way. Now, not all predators are the same height. So the skunk will do a skunk handstand in order to get its spray high enough so it can get the predator in the face. So you're gonna have your kids spread out, make sure their feet aren't gonna kick, any, kick each other, and they're just gonna try and do a handstand. Some may look like that, that's okay. Others may look more like that. See how long they can hold it. See how many they can do before they tire themselves out. Alrighty, our next one is a vulture. So vultures soar for many hours at a time, looking and smelling for food. They're able to do this because a special tendon allows them to lock their joint. This makes it easier to leave their wings out for such a long time. Spread your wings and soar like a vulture. Now what I typically have the kids do, I have them put their arms up in a V just like this and they lock them in place. They don't let them move. And then they soar around. And vultures will use wind funnels. So they're flying in a wind funnel and that'll spin them higher, take them higher and higher and higher. And then they'll leave that one and they start slowly going back down to the ground. And then they enter another wind funnel and they go up, 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 up. And they fly around in that one for a while. And then they leave and they go down, 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 down. And then back up they go in another wind funnel. You can have them do that in and out of those wind funnels. Alrighty. This one is one of my favorites. So, we have a deer. So deer jerk their head around when they aren't sure what they are seeing. If it looks dangerous, they'll stomp their front hoof, blow out their nose, and flick their tail up. Then they run away. So let's be a deer and look out for danger. So on this one, I have the kids just kind of grazing, walking around, eating. And then they stop, they see something. They're like, what? What is that? <gasps> it's dangerous. So they're gonna stomp their hoof, they're gonna blow, and they're gonna stick their tail straight up in the air, and they're gonna prance away. Or run. Whatever you wanna do to get your kids burning energy. And then you have them do it again. And they're like, oh, the danger's gone. So then they are grazing around again, walking around, eating, and then, <gasps> So they can do this again. Oh, it's safe. We can just keep moving. And they're walking around, grazing. Oh wait, what's that? And they're looking. <gasps> it's dangerous. So they go, stomp, <sighs> tail up, and run away. Well, that was our very last Animal Olympic, and I hope you had so much fun watching that video, and I hope your kids are gonna have fun doing this activity. Um, stay tuned, because that was just part one of Animal Olympics. Look out for next week's videos, because we will have part two. So, have fun everybody, enjoy being at home, and having fun with all these new activities. Stay safe out there, guys.